Hi, and welcome to this short tutorial on how to manipulate and vary your spectrogram displays and your spectrum displays using the TF32 tool. Um, I've opened up the, the window here. Uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you review the early videos, how-to videos on how to load files and do basic manipulations. I'm going to open up a, fi a file, an audio file, and there we go. And this is a, um, a sentence level production. Um, you may be able to hear this. I'm going to play it so that you can tell what it is. I'm going to turn it up and to the mic and listen. She had your dark suit and greasy wash water all year. And as you can hear, um, it's actually me reading the sentence, she had your dark suit and greasy wash water all year. Uh, you'll notice that when you first open a um, display, there's a default display, which is a sound pressure waveform on the top here in green, and then a wideband spectrogram in the panel below. And that is the default set, um, setup, so whenever you open a new file, that's what you will see. Um, you can um, vary the displays, and I suggest you go to the display, uh, the, the how-to video on how to copy files or copy images out of um, TF32 for how to um, display one or only one or more um, panels of different um, graphic representations of sound. So uh, the main controls, if you want to vary um, settings for your spectrogram, the main controls um, can be, um, you can get to those by either clicking on the button up here that says Time Freak A. Time Freak is a TF32 term for um, time frequency um, plots or a spectrogram. And if you click on that, you'll get a, um, a dialog box where you can vary a different settings. So um, one thing you can notice here, and I'm going to just vary some of these as you can look down at the display. You can see BW here, which refers to the bandwidth, and that can be varied by um, choosing either the settings for a wideband spectrogram, and that setting is typically around 300 hertz, and as you can see in the display here that this, that the, we, this is 300 hertz. Uh, or you can vary that. Um, for some female voices or children's voices, you may increase that so that you get a little better resolution of the formants. Um, or if you want to produce a narrow band spectrogram, the standard bandwidth um, of the um, analyzing bandwidth is 45 hertz. So if I change this to 45 and hit OK, you can see that now I've gone from having a wide band spectrogram to a narrow band spectrogram. If I click on this, I can return this to 300, and now I'm back to where I was. Some other things that are worth noting on here, um, we have a section here called Frequency Range, and that basically gives you the display range of um, from the very bottom, so the, the lowest frequencies to the highest frequencies. As you can see, that setting is 7.75 kilohertz, meaning that this y, y axis runs from 0 to 7.75 or 7,750 hertz. You can increase or decrease that value. Um, and it will only go as high as what's um, as half of the um, half of the sampling rate of the signal. So if you go higher, it's not going to change anything. But you can go and expand this up. So now we are only looking between zero and about 2,000 hertz here. Um, typically, you probably won't have much need to vary that. Uh, the next uh, area here is what we call the floor, and that is the minimum level of signal amplitude that will give some sort of display on the grayscale. If you remember, a, a wideband spectrogram has um, the grayscale as the intensity or the amplitude of the signal, and by changing the floor, you can basically lighten or darken the spectrogram as well. And this is helpful if you've got fairly weak signals um, where it's a little difficult to see some of the weaker energy components of a, of a speech signal. Um, and then the dynamic range, um, I would suggest that you not bother with. It's simply the amount of range um, that is captured by the grayscale. Uh, one other thing that I want to highlight before I uh, close this out is that you can click on this um, option here called LPC. And what it does is it attempts to automatically track 
the individual formant values for the um, vocalic segments of your speech signal. As you can see, just by clicking this on and off, these come on and come off. Um, those values actually can then be saved out to a file and used for um, analysis later. Uh, I won't get into too much detail on here, um, perhaps for another video. <clears throat> if you want to actually remove the actual um, time frequency display, you can just click to close TF and it's now gone. If you want to actually add a new um, TF time frequency window, you can go into view open and then click on time freak. You'll see this window again, click OK, and there you are back in display. You can have multiple time frequency windows in displaying at once um, by just simply adding another one by going to view open time freak. And this time I want to put a narrowband spectrogram up as well so I will change this from 300 to 45 and there we have both a wideband spectrogram in the second panel and then the lower panel is the narrow band spectrogram. So you can see how the differences in the displays of the narrow and wideband spectrograms are represented by um, across the same exact same signal. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about today which was specifically for the um, how to change the display patterns or display settings for the spectrograms um, view and uh, next uh, another video uh, will be how to vary settings for the spectrum view.